since we've recorded and it's just good to be back even if we're still in our little Brady Bunch squares. Oh. Hey, today um, we are just so excited to have Arena Jensen with us. Um, and I first met her through, um, she was um, worked as, I, I wanna say like that's this what we would call it in America as a missionary. She's from Croatia. Um, that's where she was um, born and grew up and so she came to our home when we were in Connecticut. My husband was pastoring there and she and her, the Youth for Christ team came there. And, you know, we just all connected at a spirit to spirit level. And um, we've just stayed connected, thank God, through the years. And she's good friends with my daughter, Carrie. And so she just got so much perspective for us. And I just can't wait to have her on. And uh, so Lindsay and I are thrilled to have her today. And Lindsay Pollard, Irena Jensen, Jansen. See, I'm gonna say that. I keep doing the A's and the E's. Sorry, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're real here. Oh, all right, let me start out. Um, so Irena, um, talk to us about, a little bit about growing up in Croatia. First of all, um, can you just tell us geographically where that is? <laughs> well, hi, hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, I'm so excited to be here with Meet Me in the Middle because and we'll talk about this more later, but it's just such kindred spirits here with the yeah. whole Meet Me in the Middle. When I saw that, I was like, oh, these ladies yeah. are like, they're my ladies. And, and so um, I'm just so excited to be here. We'll talk about the middles later, but uh, thank you for having me here. It's just such an honor to be a part of your ministry. Um, so yeah, Croatia. Croatia um, is in Central Europe. I usually tell people the easiest way to find it is if you find Italy, which looks like a boot, Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of look north of it. That's where Croatia is. We share the same sea, the same Adriatic Sea. So find the boot, uh -huh. just up above the boot. Um, and Croatia used to be part of Yugoslavia. Okay. And that's where I was born. So I was actually originally born in Yugoslavia. Huh. Uh, and then Yugoslavia fell apart. Um, and it was a communist country. You might have heard of Tito. He was kind of. He was the president and the leader of the communist Yugoslavia, which was comprised of six different republics. Um, and then that fell apart in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And that's when the wars erupted and Croatia had its war for independence and we became independent. I mean, Croatia is about 700 years old. So we've been independent on and off throughout history. We joke that we've been occupied by everyone that came through. <laughs> Um, which is reflected in our culture and our food and everything. Um, and so then Croatia became independent again in early 90s. Mm -hmm. And that's when the war happened. Um, so yeah, that's where it is. And I was born in Yugoslavia. Then I became a citizen of Croatia, naturally. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a citizen of America. And most importantly, of the heavenly kingdom. So Amen. more citizenship. Amen happening there <laughs> and that's where Lindsay has a question for you I know <laughs> thank you Lindsay so so growing up in Croatia um were you a Christian were you a part of another denomination tell us about that so I was born I'll date myself here I was born in 1974 by that time, my parents were already believers, okay. which was okay. a great blessing for me. And um, they became believers soon after they got married. My dad had some family members who were uh, believers. Um, and so, but you have to understand, Yugoslavia was a communist country at the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, Croatians are traditionally Catholic. So it's actually Catholicism okay. and ethnicity and religion are very connected. To be Croatian mm. is to be Catholic. It's kind of like the Irish and, you know, the Catholics. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my parents, my uh, dad, my parents became um, Baptists. Okay. Uh, they, well, first of all, they became children of God and they converted, what? but it was within the community of a Baptist church. So there was a... a a small but strong and vibrant 
um, evangelical Protestant presence, encouraging mm -hmm. some people who actually became believers, some of them in America, and then came back beginning of the 20th century to bring the good news to their people. So mm -hmm. my parents, which is interesting always for Americans, that uh, they made a decision to follow Christ at a Billy Graham crusade. Aww. In the middle of a communist country, for some reason, Billy Graham was allowed to come. Um, wow. I believe it was in 68. He was allowed to come to Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. And my parents went and wow. they, after Billy Graham preached, they committed, first my mom and then my dad one day wow. later, committed their life to Christ. Wow. Uh, awesome. And so it was just amazing that he was there and they... Yeah. Um, they were part of this small Baptist church that met in a home and later they built a building. And so by the time I was born, my parents were already involved in this church community, very okay. small, but very vibrant. And so I grew up and actually this, my very first memory in, in life is uh, me in a little cot, in a cot, in my like, baby bed, mm -hmm. Standing up, and my sister in hers next to mine, standing up as my parents were having a Bible study in our, uh -huh. it was kind of like a living room, and that's where my sister and I slept as well, and because my parents built their house kind of one room at a time, they added, you know, <laughs> they literally built their house, uh, so I grew up with Bible studies in the home, Okay, uh, going to church, so in some ways, very similar to probably your experience. Some right. experiences here if you grew up as a Christian. And as a child, I kind of didn't know much different. I didn't right. know that we were so unique. As I, mm -hmm. as we started, uh, started growing up and going to school and learning, I realized we were the odd ones. <laughs> because we were taught Marxism in school. We were taught... Okay that there is no God. Okay. Um, so the famous sentence that the religion is the opiate of the masses, uh -huh. that uh, people who believe in God are kind of backwards and mm -hmm. stupid. And, okay. and there were all these um, stories going around about what Christians do behind closed doors when they pulled the curtains. Mm -hmm. um, they were, we were kind of considered like second rate citizens. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, you know, Christmas, all the Christian holidays were not being celebrated. Uh, Communion okay. was huge. Santa Claus was huge. But Christmas was nothing. Sometimes we even had school still on Christmas Eve. And I remember going to school and then rushing from school and walking to church to perform a, I played Mary in the little skit, uh, <laughs> like rushing to play Mary. Uh, right my doctor, you know from school um and so early on i started learning that the world around us the country around us did not believe what we believed right and they right. thought we were weird i even remember my my teacher once told me um my sister and i were really good students and my teacher said i don't understand christians are stupid and here you're such a great student <laughs> like she couldn't work in style <laughs> Wow. So the stereotypes were just really deep. Yes, yes, stereotypes. Were deep. And then also what was more confusing to them, I mean, they, they knew about the Catholic churches because there were still churches, mm -hmm. church buildings all around the country. But who are these? They called us Novovierci, which means like the new faithers. Mm -hmm. uh, but, oh, but it was a derog derogatory term like the new faithers who are these people so not only were we believers but we were some kind of a strange faith that came from the west or who knows where from so was communism already like the leading uh rule there when you were born or did that happen somewhere into your childhood no it was um communism became the the rule of the land right after World War II. Okay, okay. Uh, kind of like with the Soviet Union. So, uh, okay. well, kind of, so right after World War II. So it was actually really strong in the 40s and 50s and 60s. There mm -hmm. was a lot of persecution of Christians. <clears throat> okay. That was being sent to jail. Okay. By the time I was born in the 70s, I would say 
that I was lucky and blessed to be born at a time when it got better as far okay. as being sent to prisons and mm -hmm. it got a little better. So I didn't feel it that way or my parents didn't feel it that way. So that I would say the persecution or the hardships, I would say, mm -hmm. the hardships mm -hmm. were not as overt. It was, right. more, I'll give you one example. My dad worked for the Croatian oil pipeline company um, when, when I was about seven or eight, I think he, he started there. And so he was a part of this group of men and he was a really good worker, very skilled and, and they wanted to make him the manager, but they couldn't because he wasn't a member of the communist party. So he could uh -huh. not be promoted because he uh -huh. was a member of the communist party. So they told him, his friends are like, just become a member. Nobody has to know that you go to church as well. Just become a member so you can get promoted. And my dad said, no because right. the Communist Party does not support what I believe. They're right. against what I believe. I know what I believe. And it doesn't matter that they're not going to go. No, I'm not going to go against what I know is true. Right, so, right, and right. so he stood for his belief. Yeah. Yeah. And he did not become a member of the Communist Party. And he never got promoted. Wow. In his career, he never got promoted. because So, of that. so he paid the price. Mm. ending up for his beliefs mm. he didn't lose his job he didn't lose his job which yeah. was important yeah because he was just a, such a great worker everybody loved him and also when they went on these trips he traveled quite a bit because he worked for the croatian oil pipeline company he was the one that they knew they could trust mm. he did not get drunk mm, of course drive, so the rest of them got yeah drunk. so now could you so could your church meet publicly and everything? Did that, was there any restrictions on, you know, the, these new, new faithers? <laughs> <laughs> so we could, we could meet pub, we could meet. Um, we could not build a church that looked like a church. So our churches had to look like regular houses. Okay. okay. Um, and um, I kind of joked that we also, this is connected to us trying to be different than the Catholics. So, we couldn't build churches that look like churches. We want to be different as the Catholics. So our churches were made to look as ugly as possible. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Just a regular house. You know, I mean, if you, when you came inside, it kind of, it had a pulpit and everything, but no, dec not much decorations. And on the outside, it just looked like a house. And we were allowed to meet there as long as we did not try to convert people. So it's like you go in there into your little buildings that don't look like churches and you can do your thing, but do not try to go out in the streets. Do not prosel, prof, evangelize. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That works. <laughs> okay. okay, so <laughs> as we, go ahead, go ahead. But I just wanted to say, which did not stop my mom from <laughs> having coffee with her neighbors every morning, because that's our culture, like, you know, yeah. coffee every morning. And to say, well, I read my daily bread, our daily bread every morning. So if they had coffee at her house, she would read the daily bread. She I, did not stop her from speaking her faith, talking about her faith, witnessing. One of our neighbors became a believer, joined our church. Um, yeah. They, so we were not allowed to do that. But it did not stop her from having coffee and telling right. people about, and then we also, I'm sorry, just one other quick story. No. We yeah. found creative ways to do this. So we were not allowed to have open air meetings or like uh, publicly evangelize or, or, or mm -hmm. speak, preach the gospel. But right. a lot of people from Yugoslavia went to Greece on vacation. Mm. So our groups would go there for camp, summer camps. And <sighs> then we would preach to our people on Greek beaches and give them Bibles and preach to them there and evangelize. Oh, and, I love uh, it. And so that's where I went once. Uh, my brother went a few times. And um, actually, that's, I don't mean to get right into kind of the, the painful stuff, but on the way back from one of those evangelistic outreaches in Greece, on the way back, my brother died and his three friends died in a car accident. Oh. But one of the last pictures of my brother that we have, that we got after his death, because he died in 1990, uh, coming back from Greece, um, is a picture of him on the beach 
with this book bag full of Bibles, yeah. just a group of people yeah. around him, and he was giving out Bibles. Yeah. That's one of the last oh. things he did That's beautiful. before he died. Yeah. So we found very creative ways yes. to right. still preach the gospel. That's awesome. And, and that that is... Oh, that's just so good. And and that's a good teaser talking about your brother, because we're going to talk about some of those times. But just before we, we've got to finish up this one. But before as we finish up, could you just, you know, give us perspective here in America about being a Christian in times like like so obviously it wasn't a what I call perfect scenario. And I think here in America, we've had we've grown up for so long to where everything sort of worked together for Christianity in a way, you know what I mean? Everybody, it was all supportive for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, even if people didn't believe everything the same, we got tons of denominations and all that, mm -hmm. but still there was that kind of culture. Um, you know, talk to us about the reality of following Jesus when it's not supported out here and you've already talked about that some but but just a perspective to us is you know that you would you know if you were to say to us Americans <laughs> you know. yeah, um so I I uh, I always find it interesting when my husband, I married an American and my wonderful husband, Scott, and sometimes he asks me, he's like, so when you were growing up, did you like, did you want to leave? Did you just want to come to America where there was freedom and, and, you know, you could be Christian without fear and limitations. And I was like, no, I mean, we lived there. That was our country. That was our yeah. land. That was where our roots were. That's where our family was. We never thought of let's escape this. this that was our life. That, that was our life. And we just, we, I would say we didn't know any better, but actually we knew better. Mm -hmm. Right. Just we're the church. We just okay. were children of God. We yeah. just were like, this is who we are. And people mm. don't believe this, but we know what the truth is. I was taught Marxism at school, mm -hmm. um, but I knew what the truth was because at home, yeah. my mom and my parents, they had Bible studies, they taught, yes. we had devotionals, we knew what the truth was, we went to church, even when it wasn't convenient, you had to run right, right after school, or people thought we were stupid, we knew what the truth was, and we just, to us, it felt like such a normal thing, uh -huh. yeah, we just were the church, we just yeah. trusted God, we believed in him, we knew we had to pay the price for it, we were considered to be stupid, and backwards, there were stereotypes, um, that were that we kind of had to fight. Sometimes we didn't even fight them. We were like, well, you believe this. We're just going to live who we are. We're going to love our neighbors. We are yeah. going to help. We're going to live a life that God is calling us uh, mm. to live. Um, we are going to tell you in personal relationships and contact about who this God is. We're going to witness. When my brother died, my mom got up and spoke at the cemetery right in front of my brother's coffin about the hope we have in Christ. And there are thousands of people there. Um, we just lived, we just were the church. And I remember even when I came here for college, right in 93, in the middle of the war, I had the opportunity to come to America for college. And it was around the time when people were saying, and Joy, you had mentioned this story, I shared it multiple times, people were saying, we can't pray at the flagpole anymore. And it was a big disaster. And I just couldn't understand it. I was like, what flagpole? Why do you have to pray around the flagpole? Why is this a disaster? Like, you can still pray. I never was allowed to pray or have Bible studies at, at, at school, but it never prevented me from being a believer, from praying, right. and saying what right. I believed. We always were just the church. And so even recently, and, and I do have to, I'm sorry, I know we need to wrap up. We're just going to say two quick things. Yeah, I, I do now, sometimes I joke and I tell people here, I sometimes now in America, I kind of feel some of the similar things I felt back growing up you know if i say i went to christian college they're like oh you're a little kind of backwards person mm. and that's how i you know they would tell me about and just yeah. some of the things i feel the same stereotypes right that are here and i feel that and i tell scott well i finally arrived to america and now i feel the same how i did <laughs> but um so I, there is some some of that um yeah. you know but it's a more complex story, but uh, 
but I keep telling people, just be the church. Yeah. Mm. This this does mm. not affect who we are. Yes. Just be the church. Just love your neighbors. Yes. Trust God. Speak to people about who God is, what yes. He has mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. We can still be the church, regardless yes. of this. Yes. Just just be the church. Be the mm. church. There, there's no nobody has to prove to you or approve and tell you you can do this or not do this. And I know that you we might have to pay the price. My my dad did. My my family did. They did. Mm -hmm. We didn't prosper as much um, financially as other people who were members of the Communist Party and had the opportunities to get promotions. And mm -hmm. they would steal and use their positions for personal gain, or all, they would get apartments and things. Now, still, all those people have summer homes. My parents don't. They just build their house, you know, with their forehand. But you can still be the church. Yeah, just right. be the church. And that is, if I, if I, I know that sounds like such a simple cliche, no, but no, I no. try to tell the people now whatever is happening, and there's hard things ha happening yes. uh, on multiple levels um, mm -hmm. in, in America. Mm -hmm. It's like, just be the church. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, when things are hard, when we yeah. were stripped away, from all those things that could have influenced us of who we were in the church, and especially during the war, when you were stripped of all the extra things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then the essence remains Ooh. of what it means, of what it means to walk with God, to trust him, mm -hmm. to believe in him, to tell your story in a way that tells of him, yes. to love your neighbor, mm -hmm. even if they think you're weird. Yeah. and backwards yeah. mm -hmm. to witness it's just be the church now the hard work i think for american church is to rehash and discover what it means to be the church Ooh. okay so oh. we're going to pause right there <laughs> to drop the bomb on us we're gonna address that Okay. okay. All right. See you next. Be sure to come back. All right. Come back. <laughs>